am Lily. Today, I'm going to read you the story "The Witches" by Roald Dahl, from page one hundred seventy-nine to page one hundred to page one hundred ninety. Okay, let's read it. Mr. Jenkins and his son. Mr. Jenkins came striding up to our table with a very purposeful look on his face. What is that grandson of yours? He said to my grandmother. He spoke rudely and looked very angry. My grandmother put on her frosted look, but he didn't. But didn't answer him. My guess is that he and my son Bruno are up to some development. Mr. Jenkins went on. Bruno hasn't turned off for his supper, and it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of lot to make that boy miss his food. I must add. Admit he was a very healthy appetite. My grandmother th- said. My feeling is that you are in on this as well, Mister Jenkins said. I don't know who the devil you are, and I don't much care. But you played a nasty trick on me and my wife this afternoon. You put a dirty little mouse on the table. That makes me think of. Or three of you are up to something. So if you know where Bruno's hiding, kindly tell me. I was. There was no trick I played on you. My grandmother said the mouse I tried to give you was your own little boy Bruno. I was being kind to you. I was trying to restore him to the bosom of his fa- family. You refused to take him. What he blazes? Do you mean, Madame? Shouted Mister Jenkins. My son isn't a mouse. His black mustache was jumping up and down like a crazy as he spoke. Come on, woman. Where is he? Out with it. The family at the table nearest to us had all stopped eating and were staring at Mister Jenkins. My grandmother sat there, puffing away calmly at her black cigar. I can well understand your anger. I can't. Oh, I can well understand your anger, Mister Jenkins," she said. "Any other English father would be just as cross as you are. But over in Norway, where I come from, we are quite used to these sort of happenings. We have learned to accept them as part of everyday life." "You must be mad, woman!" cried Mister Jenkins. "Where's Bruno? If you tell me at once, I shall summon the police." "Bruno is a mouse," my grandmother said, calm as ever. He must be sentenced. He most certainly is not a mouse," shouted Mr. Jenkins. "Oh yes, I am," Bruno said, poking his head up out of the handbag. Mr. Jenkins looked about three feet into the air. "Hello, Dad," Bruno said. He had a sinister, mousy grin on his face. Mr. Jenkins' mouth dropped open so wide. I could see the gold fillings in his black teeth. Don't worry, Dad. Bruno went on. It's not as bad as all that. Just so as, just so long as the cat doesn't get me. Bruno stammered, Mister Jenkins. No more school," said Bruno, grinning abroad and a shine. Mouse grin. No more homework. I shall live in the kitchen cupboard and feast on raisins and honey. But B- B- Bruno. Stammered Mr. Jenkins. How how did this happen? The poor man had no wind left in his cells at all. Which is my grandmother said. The witch said it. I can't believe a mouse for a son. Shrieked Mr. Jenkins. You got one, my grandmother said. Be nice to him, Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins will go crazy. Yelled Mr. Jenkins. She can't stand the things. She will just have to get used to him. My grandmother said, "I hope you don't keep a cat in the house." We do, we do," cried Mr. Jenkins. "Topsy is my wife's favorite creature." Then you will just have to get rid of Topsy," my grandmother said. "Your son is more important than your cat. He certainly is." Bruno shouted from inside the handbag. "Your, you tell mom she's got to rid of the Topsy before I go home." By now, half the dining room was watching our little group. Knives and forks and spoons had been put down all and all over the place. Hats were turning round to stare at Mr. Jenkins as he stood there, spiritually and shouting. They could see, they couldn't see either Bruno or me, and they were wondering, "What are they all fuss about?" By the way, my grandmother said, "Would you like to know who did this to him?" 
there was a mischievous little smile on her face, and I could see that she was about to get Mr. Jenkins into trouble. Who? He cried. Who did it? That man over there, my grandmother said, the small one in the black dress at the head of the long table. She's a rest piece of tea, cried Mr. Jenkins. She's the chairwoman. No, she's not, my grandmother said. She's the grand eye which afford the world. You mean she did it, that skinny little woman over there, shouted Mr. Jenkins, pointing. Pointing. You mean she did it, that skinny little woman over there, shouted Mr. Jenkins, pointing at her with a long finger. By God, I will have my lawyers on to her for this. I will make her pay through the nose. I wouldn't do anything rash, my grandmother said to me. That woman has magic powers. She might decide to turn you into something even sillier than a mouse. A cockroach, perhaps. Turn me into a cockroach, shouted, shouted Mr. Jenkins, puffing out his chest. I'd like to see I'd like to see her try. He swung around and started marching across the dining rooms. Towards the Grand Eye Witch's table, my grandmother and I watched him. Bruno had jumped up onto our table, was also watching his father. Practically everyone in the dining room was watching Mr. Jenkins now. I stayed where I was, peeping out on my grandmother's handbag. I thought it might be wiser to stay put. The try. Mr. Jenkins had got more than a few fake. Faces, faces toward the Grand Eye Witch's table when a piercing scream rose high above all the other noises in the room, and at the same moment, I saw the Grand Eye Witch go shutting up into the air. Now she was standing on a chair, still screaming. Now she was on the top, on the tabletop, waving her arms. What on earth happened, Grandma? Wait, my grandmother said. Keep quiet and watch. So, suddenly, all the other witches, more than 80 of them, were beginning to scream and jump out of their seats as though sparks were being stuck into their bottoms. Something, someone, some were standing on chairs, some were up on the tables, and all of them were wiggling about and waving their arms in the most extraordinary manner. Then, all at once, they became quiet. Then they stared. Every single witch stood there, as stiff and silent as a corpse. Then the whole room became deathly still. They're shrinking, Grandma. I said, they're shrinking just like I did. I know they are, my grandmother said. It's the mouse maker, I cried. Look, some of them are growing far on their faces. Why is it working so quickly, Grandma? I will tell you why, my grandmother said. Because all of them had massive overdoses, just like you. It's thrown the alarm clock right out of whack. Everyone is in the dining room was standing up out now to get a better view. People were moving closer. They were beginning to crowd round the two long tables. My grandmother lifted Bruno and me up so that we wouldn't miss any of the fun. In her excitement, she jumped up onto her head, onto her chair so that she could see over the heads of the crowd. In another few seconds, all the witches had completely disappeared and the tops of the two long tables were swarming little small brown mice. All over the dining room, women were screaming and the strong men were turning white in her face and shouting, It's crazy! This can't be happen! Um, let's get the heck out of her quicker! Leaders were attacking the, the mice with the chairs and the wine bottles and anything else that came to hand. I saw, sh I saw a chef in a tall white hat rushing out from the kitchen brandishing a frying pan and another one just behind him was wielding a curving knife above his head and everyone was yelling mice 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 we must get rid of the mouse mice only the children in the world were really enjoying it they all they all seemed to know instinct is 
instinctively that something good was on right there in front of them, and they were clapping and cheering and laughing like mad. It's time to go, my grandmother said. Our work is done. She got she got down off her hair chair and picked up her handbag and slung it over her arm. She had me in her right hand and Bruno in her left. Bruno, she said, the time has come to restore you to the fam famous Bossmobile family. My mom's not very crazy about my school, Bruno said. So I noticed, my grandmother said, she'll just have to get used to you, won't she? It was not difficult to find Mr. and Mr. Jenkins. You could hear Mr. Mrs. Jenkins' shrill voice all over the room. Herbert! He was screaming, Herbert, get me out of here. There's mice everywhere. They will go over oh, my skirts. She had her arms high up around her husband, and from where I was, she seemed to be swinging from a snack. My grandmother advanced upon them and threw a spoon into Mr. Jenkins's hand. So, Jenkins's hand, and now. Here's your little boy, she said. He needs to go on a diet. Hi, Dad, Brenda said. Hi, Mom. Mr. Jenkins screamed even louder. My grandmother, with me in her hand, turned and marched out of the room. She went straight across the hotel lobby and out through the front entrance into the open air. Outside, it was a lovely warm evening, and I could hear the waves breaking on the beach just across the road. From the hotel, is there a taxi here? My grandmother said to the tall doorman in his green uniform. Certainly, madame, he said, and he put two fingers in his m mouth and blew a long shrill whistle. I watched him with envy. For weeks, I had been trying to whistle like that, but I hadn't succeeded once. Now I never would. The taxi came. The driver was an oldish man with a thick black dropping mustache. The mouse hung over his mouth, like the roots of some plant. Where to, madame? he asked. Suddenly, he caught sight of me. A little mouse nestling in my grandmother's hand. Believe me, he said, what's that? It's my grandson, my grandmother said. Drive us to the station, please. I always liked mice, the old taxi driver said. I used to keep hundreds of, hundreds of, um, when I was a boy. Mice is the fastest readers in the world. Did you know them, madame? So if he is your grandson, then I reckon you will have a few great grandsons to go with him in a couple of weeks' time. Drive us to the station, please, my grandmother said, looking pretty. Yes, madame, he said right away. My grandmother got into the back of the taxi and sat down and put me on her lap. Are we going home? I asked her. Yes, she said, back to Norway. Hooray, I cried. Oh, hooray, hooray, hooray. I thought you'd like that, she said. What about our luggage? Who cares about luggage, she said. The taxi was driving through the streets of the Bournemouth. And this was the last, this was the time of day when the pavements were crowded with holiday makers who were wandering about aimlessly with nothing to do. How are you feeling, my darling? My grandmother said, fine, I said, quite marvelous. She began sp stroking the fur on the back of my neck and one, with one finger, we have accomplished great fits today, she said. It's been terrific. I said, absolutely terrific. Bye.